<laughs> I'm glad you guys read uh, or read the site. Um, so basically, uh, I've interviewed you now for a few years, yeah. and you have done all sorts of movies and all sorts of genres. Were you finally at the point where, like, okay, I want to do a project, or I'm going to make everyone cry? Um, <laughs> yeah, for for lack of depth, definitely that was the number one. Um, no, no, I mean, I think it, it was a it was a plethora of things. I think one of my number one things. When I read the script, besides falling in love with it, besides falling in love with the book, was that I wanted to make a movie that girls my age could go see with their moms and their families, and that people of all ages and different, you know, everything can can go see it and, and enjoy it. Because a lot of the movies I make are, are quite specific movies. So uh, that was one thing that really excited me about If I Say. Was it when? How were you pitched the project? Did they send you the script? Did they send you the book? They sent uh, my managers uh, the the book and the script to, together, and they read the script first, and then uh, read the book and, and told me about it and told me how good it was. And so I went and read the script myself and read the book simultaneously, and I kind of fell in love with the the character of Mia and who she was and, and who she is. Um, and uh, and then I went and I met with R J, and we kind of, you know, we R J and I had almost worked together on a movie uh, that kind of fell apart a little bit prior to to this one. Um, and, and so we already had a relationship. So when we came to this, we already knew we really liked each other as, as you know, him as a filmmaker and me as an actor. Um, and then we just had the exact same notes on Mia. And we really thoroughly understood who Mia is and, and who her fail, what her family means to her and who Adam is and, and kind of the, the use of the cello and what it means to her and how it's, it is her life. You know, it is who she is. It's her identity. Um, so we had all the, the same notes. So. Uh, RJ is an interesting choice as a director because I really like the September issue, which you know he did, uh, obviously. Uh, what was he like to collaborate with, especially coming off, because he's done docs and he's done so many different things. Mm -hmm. He's awesome. I think, honestly, without him, this movie would have been campy and kind of based around a super sci-fi element that probably wouldn't have really hit the mark. Um, so I think really what he brought to it and what we knew he was going to bring to it was the the naturalistic documentary kind of background that he has. So he brought this gravitas to this very large story that otherwise could have been taken completely out of context. He brought this, this weight to it, this beauty to it, that he just approached every situation um, very much so, very raw. Um, and he just kind of let us do our thing. He was, he was incredibly collaborative. And he really based it around music, music, music. He gave us iPods, he gave us discs, he gave us all this different stuff to kind of, you know, get ourselves deeper into into who the characters were and, and understand how these characters literally live and breathe through music. Their entire lives are lyrical. One of the things that I really appreciated about the movie is that everyone, it just felt very authentic. You know, the, the characters, the situation. Genuine. Yeah, it just it felt real, yeah. and I especially love the use of Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah, and Beck. Cool. It just it, it felt very and Tom O'Dell and yeah. Obviously, uh, what was that like on set for you? Like, sort of uh, with Smashing Pumpkins and the music, and just what was it like for you on set? Uh, it was awesome. I mean, you know, for me in particular, in a different way. I mean, the classical music element. I had, you know, I had like three or four people with me on set at the same time, helping me out with that and and teaching me things. And I had a, I had a cello double, and I also had a cello teacher, and and we also had this music specialist on set. And you know, and it was it was everything was based around music, and it was so cool to live in this world. It was almost as if we were making a musical or something. Um, because a lot of the people that work on our, our on our show were like the, the people who, you know, even though Glee's a lot more of the c comedy side of it, they did a lot of the, the music editing on that and, and kind of the integration of it. Um, and, and it was cool. It was it was really awesome to kind of work with these really great people. And, and I, I love the use of Smashing Pumpkins and Beck and Tom O'Dell and, and the use of classical music. The way that they really reinvented classical music in a way that I think allows younger audiences to appreciate it more than they would. Uh, I definitely am curious, what movies have you seen recently that you've really dug? Did you see Guardians of the Galaxy? I haven't seen that, but I've heard it's amazing. No, it's it's kind of good. I heard it's funny yeah. and like cute and fun. Um, the movie I saw most recently was Boyhood, and I think um, what I really liked about it was the fact that it wasn't about kind of anything in a sense. It was literally about boyhood. It was literally about a kid growing up. And I really love just watching kind of this artistic piece of 
of of just life and 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 not really love you know not really crazy family issues besides a few minor ones and the abuse and stuff but it was really just this this little kid's life that 99% of the country lives and I just thought it was really special I think I think boyhood I'm glad you mentioned it because I think it could use all the press it can get it's God, yeah. one of my favorites of the year bar none. me too 100% that's exactly what I was gonna say talk a little bit about what you have coming up because I know you're you're always busy I yeah. know you're going to Toronto with Equalizer yeah. I know you have a whole bunch of other things what can you tease people what's coming up for you um I yeah I uh, I, I have the Equalizer coming out with Denzel Washington I'm premiering that um, at, at TIFF you know Toronto International Film Festival which is so exciting um, I filmed that last year with Denzel Washington and Antoine Fuqua, who are like the dream team of people to work with, and it was just a beautiful experience for me. It was it was really dark and, and stunning, and I learned a lot about myself as an actress. Um, and then I, uh, you know, I did the Clouds of Sils Maria, which is being released in in Europe, and we're, I think we're getting in a, a, a an American, you know, United States release um, soon. I have Laggies coming out soon, also a lot of movies coming out. Um, I have dark places yet to be uh, to know which festival it's going to, but hopefully it'll be going to one of those. Um, and then I start filming my next project uh, called The Fifth Wave, which starts September twenty something. So I leave like the first. Where are you guys filming that? Atlanta, my hometown. So gonna be with my whole family first Thanksgiving with the entire family like the last five or six years so yeah I read a little bit about that I know I gotta go but it sounds like you're putting together a nice cast for that as well oh my gosh an absolutely brilliant cast I mean we have Liev Schreiber uh, we have some really really interesting people for the other roles really great new talent uh, young women young men um, it's really a young youthful cast uh, really fresh faces great fresh director Jay Blakeson you know, it's honestly a I really. I know Jake was directing that. Yeah, Jay's awesome. He's honestly, he's one of the best guys. He's really awesome. I gotta go. Listen, congratulations on everything, and congrats on this specifically.